Hey guys, it's Spacey Sims, and we are back with more Radiant Tail, continuing Zephora's route, and probably going to get our end in this part because they're all about four hours and we're a little bit ahead because we normally like get into each chapter for each part but we're a little bit ahead we're already in chapter four so um yeah so probably would most likely gonna get his ending in this part like normal so we're now playing poker with the man who's we're trying to trick who has a perfume you know anyway the man dictated that the victor would be the first to win three matches Oh, look at our boy playing Boca. He's also the circus clown, so you know he's got some card tricks up his sleeves, so. And the fact that he could get cards out of those tight cuffed sleeves is, Im is impressive, but you know. Look at him. Yes, it's about time we got another CG. And you know what? I mean, I because we usually get CGs, like, right away we get one in every route, or, like, every like, chapter, every part. That's the word I'm looking for. And we got one right off the bat now. I love it. The first match... Zephora chuckled merrily, placing his cards face up. Look at his beautiful face. Ugh. Lucky me. I pulled some good cards. I'll have the first win. Huh, fine. We're here to win three times. I can let you have one. The man's gonna win the second. Moving on to the second game. Well, well. Can you really afford to be so weak? I'll have to think twice about leaving my affairs in your hands. Looking at the revealed cards, Zephora provoked the man with the left. Oh, it's not best out of three. It's three total wins. So, okay. What? You're going to be cheating. There's no way you've got such a killer hand twice over. It's not fair that we're playing in a place you manage. But you're the one who chose this game. You probably rigged it so you'd win no matter what I picked, didn't you? And you can look into, your, look into it yourself once this is all over. If you find proof that I'm cheating, the win is yours. You sure have some guts for a dirty cheat, huh? I'll get you for sure. The man flew into a rage, his earlier cool nowhere to be found. Oh, look at that devious look on his face. Oh, look at it. Oh. God, it's so hot. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Those eyes are basically like, I just fucked this guy over and I'm going to fuck you hard later in, for, in victory. Yes! That is, those are some bedroom eyes you're giving me, sir. Don't give it to the man, though. He's like, <laughs> you bastard. Because this is his devious evil. He's going to literally fuck this man's life up. Because this man's trying to fuck up his. You know what I'm saying? And then also when he's like, and then I'm going to celebrate by fucking my girlfriend. Like, inappropriately hard. <laughs> you come for this kind of shit, don't you? But like, Seriously. Seriously, there's all sorts of dirty looks going on in those eyes. Okay. It's devious and sinister and sexy and I'm here for it. All right? Like, shit. Way to start this part. Ha! <laughs> I'm amazed you were able to escape Balto's place given your personality. For a timid, wary small fry, you're way too proud of yourself. You probably already realized this, but you could have lived ten more lives and still never been a threat to me. Huh? You looking down on me, you bastard? Not at all. I'm merely stating the facts. I can't see so bad that Zavora can't be bothered to pretend anymore. Zavora was playing in good faith. He wasn't cheating or anything. Their skills alone determined the outcome of the game. Oh man, I was hoping he was cheating. He's just that good. Well, this is the showdown. Ooh! Oh my god, look at the way he's just sitting with the cards on the table, and it's just... And then, like, the... It's so Mafia boss. But, I mean, there is a Mafia boss, like, kind of subtlety behind the Labyrinth Sentinel whole thing, but, like... And, you know, everything about this, but, like, it's so fucking hot. Like, god damn it. You're so intimidating and powerful. I mean, you're a big fucking marshmallow. But the fact that you're like this, and then, like, people are intimidated by you, and like, oh my god, he's kind of scary, and whatever, and he's like, he is very, yeah. And then later, you're gonna, like, just turn into a puddle of marshmallowy goo for me. Like, I just love it. It's amazing. Like, like, I, it's so fucking good. Brimming with confidence, Sephora placed his cards on the table. What the? 
You got a full house? No way, I can't believe this. You must be cheating, right? The man flipped the cards and looked under the table for gimmicks. He was searching desperately for proof. Indeed, it'd be a piece of cake for me to cheat without you knowing. However, it'd be a waste of time to even bother coming up with tricks against someone like you. You're just too weak. Damn it! The man pounded his fists on the table. Oh, well, whatever. I still get my share even though I lost. Share? Oh, you mean our earlier chat. I forget about it. I don't feel like doing business with a half-wit swindler like, swindler like you anymore. What the hell? Sorry to say, but there's nothing I can do for you, no matter how much you want me to cut you a deal. Huh? What do you mean? The man sprang to his feet, reaching out for Savora. Arrest the culprit! You! A less voice echoed throughout the casino, and the man was quickly apprehended. I mean, you can't do business with someone who's about to go to jail, right? All the perfume in his house has been confiscated. Accounting for what he already used, it matches the amount that went missing. And the lunatic riots won't happen again. My goodness. The Maracas perfume's ability to corrupt the minds of, the, of others made it extremely dangerous. At long last, the threat that once plunged culture into chaos was gone for good. What a relief. While we were play-acting in the casino, Alest and the security forces found the man's hideout. Alest arrived with the evidence during the poker game. Then the security forces apprehended the man on the sentinel signal. Well then, I have an interrogation to do, so I shall take my leave. With that, Alest departed the scene. Bye, Alest! I would have loved to have seen you involved in the poker game and had a CG with the two of you being all sexy and beautiful. We got that surprise CG in Ion's route. I can't expect it in every one, but I kind of low-key am crossing my fingers hoping. I just love the fact that you show up in all the routes, though. I turned to Sephora. I was really nervous, but I'm glad everything turned out so well. Good job, Sephora. Elated, I held out my hand. Sephora raised his, ready to give me a high five. The same goes to you. With this, the case is closed! Whoa! Vilio popped out of nowhere and smacked both our hands. <laughs> you didn't do anything! There was an edge to his voice. He must have been annoyed by the interruption. But you were the one who rejected me when I said I wanted help. You're so sloppy, I couldn't send you out to investigate, and I wasn't going to let you wander the casino since he knew your face. What made you think I'd accept your offer? Shh. I wanted to join the operation, too. Oh, well, I got an even bigger part to play after this, right, Zephora? Ugh. The redhead patted Zephora's shoulder, looking as giddy as a kid on a field trip. Proposal? Hmm? What are you going to do now? Zephora furrowed his brow and glared at Vilio. I wondered if the dragon boy was patting, patting him a bit too hard. Oh no! I'm sorry, I'm not supposed to talk about it! You absolute lizard brain! Huh? I had no idea what they were referring to. Uh, ignoring the, flushed, uh, the flustered redhead, Zephora faced me. We're going out now. Now? Uh, where? I want to get some fresh air. I'll fill you in when we get there. No need to bring anything. Okay. We cleared our schedules for today's plan, so it should be all right. Is there something else going on that I forgot about? I thought of several anniversaries in my mind, but none of them match today's date. We're getting engaged! Jones with the small stuff. Just go. What are you... Hurry up and snap out of La La Land, or else I'll leave you here. Hey, you can't do that. Two men walked off, leaving me to stew in my bewilderment. I quickly shook it off and ran after them. Once we left the underground labyrinth and re-emerged on the surface, Filio changed into his dragon form. Zephora and I rode on his back to some unknown destination. Oh, we're gonna go to his parents' graves. He could be like, Mom, Dad, this is Spacey. I love her. We're getting married. Okay, we're done. Even after coming this far, the silver-haired man wouldn't tell me where we were going. And yet, I feel like I know where it is. 
There was only one place Vilio would need to take us. It was the one we spoke about before, no doubt. Having you two on my back reminds me of the time I carried three people from Orion's. <laughs> it's been so long. I remember we couldn't leave our leave her enter the city because of the wind wall Balto built. Speaking of walls of wind, can you make one too, Zephora? I probably can, but I don't see the point. That power gave us some real headaches back then, but now it belongs to you. Kind of, kind of a weird feeling. He has a point. It does feel strange. It clicked for me just how much things had changed since then. Come to think of it, Zephora freaked out when he found out you weren't missing, Spacey. Man, I can't believe he managed to wait a whole year even though he was a mess for just those few days apart. That's because I had no idea whether she was safe. They're completely different. Now that you mention it, I never heard what happened back then. How was Sephora when I was away? So you see... Shut up, lizard brain. Say one more word and I'll ban you from eating meat in Kultura forever. Obviously, this topic was a no-go for Zephora. What? That's evil! Give me another question, then. How about you tell us about anything that caught your eye during your journey? Does that mean you want to know what I like? Like, hell, I'm interested in you. I just want to see if there's any good worth importing to Kultura. Oh, I see. There are lots. Like, there's this fruit I recently got from a village near Kalita. <laughs> Their friendly banter reminded me of our tour around the world. We basked in the nostalgia and enjoyed each other's company throughout our fight, our flight, not fight, well, flight. Whenever the wind picked up, Zephora helped Vilio fly smoothly with the labyrinth necklace. It was a peaceful trip, all in all. The dragon landed in a beautiful meadow in the upper reaches of Kultura. The, hardly little, the hardy little wildflowers were in full bloom, swaying in the breeze. There must be a lot of wind spirits here. Like, how the fuck do they get the... I mean, maybe they're ashes, but like, how the fuck do they get his parents up here to bury them if they're such a faraway place? The wind caressing my cheeks was so refreshing. All right, be back later. Elio spread his wings and took to the sky once more. You follow me. Okay. I did as I was told and trailed after him. Aw, oh, yeah. Then, after a short walk, we found a small stone monument standing alone in the grass. I knew it. It's the Labyrinth Sentinel family grave. This is where my parents are resting. Labyrinth Sentinel family grave. A gravesite where Labyrinth Sentinels and their partners rest. While getting there on foot isn't easy, it's a beautiful place surrounded by flowers and clear air, as well as wind spirits, and only where the Labyrinth Sentinels go. We're so special. We're on top of a mountain, physically impossible to get to. Well, this is very difficult on foot, but... Looking closely, I saw several names listed on the stone. I recognized the names at the very bottom. One thing struck me, though. I don't see Balto's name here. Those who committed crimes cannot be here. Sephora had practically read my mind. Shall we tidy up some? It's a little overgrown. You're right. Both of us pulled up the weeds around it. We polished the gravestone with the water and cloth Zephora had brought. Looking at ease, Zephora put his hands together to offer a silent prayer. I did the same beside him. A gentle breeze tousled my hair as though they were expressing their gratitude. Zephora's eyes fluttered open and he began to speak. I'm glad I made it here after so long. Same. I'm sure your parents are happy. We need to thank Vilio after this. He was being unusually open at that moment. I imagine it was because we were in the place that meant so much to him. I remember coming here once as a child with my parents. It's really far from the city, so we couldn't come here often. We only visited this place when we had something very important to share with our ancestors. I didn't really understand what this place was like back, was like back then because I was so young. My memory's hazy. I guess my parents came here to let our ancestors know I'd be the next sentinel. His story alone conveyed the significance of the sight. I'm sure my father and mother are resting peacefully here. Sephora's voice and expression were so tender. Drawn in by the mood, I found myself speaking. What were your parents like? 
Let's see. My dad was always swamped. He was busy with work every single day. I have a very clear mental image of him sitting at his desk looking so stern. When I went to his office, he wouldn't even look up. He'd say, how are your studies, or stop messing around and educate yourself. He never played with me. He only focused on making me a great labyrinth sentinel. Look at his sad little face! Hug him! Hug a poor precious boy that dad never- Do you want to go play catch? Did you bring a ball? And a glove? We'll play catch. Like your dad never played with you, that's so sad. But he was the kind of person who devoted everything, including himself, to the city. I really looked up to him for that. Safar had told me a little about his parents during our journey with Circus. He learned how to become a labyrinth sentinel under his strict father's tutelage. He strove to live up to his father's high expectations. My mother was always there to support him. She was a common, sensible person. She barely ever brought up my father's work with him. She only got aggressive when he started pushing himself too hard. My mother treated me the same as everyone else. She was such a nice person. When we were together, the one thing we talked about was my father. Like how much he cared about the city or how hard he worked for it. She didn't say it directly, but I could tell she was proud of him. His strictness must have come from his father and he probably inherited his mother's kindness. As a descendant of Labyrinth Sentinels, he had experienced a harsh upbringing. At the same time, his family had undoubtedly loved him. I wish I could speak with them. Same here. If I ever got to see them again, I'd have so many questions for them. And not that there's much point in dwelling on it. What kind of things would you want to ask? I guess, what are your hopes for Kultura? What did you expect of me? I thought I'd understand just by watching my parents. Turns out I didn't know the true weight a sentinel has to carry until I shouldered it myself. I'm still asking myself the same question every single day. Can I become a great labyrinth sentinel and make my father proud? No. Stop it. The only person who could answer Zephora was no longer here. He had little choice but to ponder all those questions on his own. I'm sure your dad's proud of you, sweetie. I just want to cry. What could he do to make the city a better place? How could he take pride in his work as a labyrinth sentinel? However, he wasn't truly alone. We'll come up with the answers together. I hope to stand tall at his side as he grew and moved forward. And I hope we continue to support each other in the future. What about you? What about me? You lost your parents as well, didn't you? And what would you ask if you could see them again? Let's see. If I were to see my parents again... Gosh, I would have way too much to say. But there's one thing I'd have to tell them about first. What's that? My adventures with Circus. Obviously the answer is you! My adventures with Circus. I'd have to tell them about you. You're the most important thing to me. And then if I had time, I'd tell them about Circus. I could tell them about my adventures with Circus when I talk about you. But you were the number one reason why I would tell them about that. Okay, I was like, come on. There's no fucking way that's not the right answer. You, obviously. Me? Yep. I'd tell them about this guy I thought I'd never get along with. He's never honest and has a sharp tongue. We kissed, but then he made me wait for a whole year after. <laughs> His little face. Sounds like you're bad-mouthing me. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not done yet, you know. He cares more about his friends than anyone else I know. He's smart, but he's actually very childish. He does so much for other people that he runs himself ragged. I have to keep a close eye on him. Oh, and I find it cute that he's been doting on me now and again. I'm not cute. You're cute and dashing, actually. You little... Are you teasing me? <laughs> I'm just being honest, unlike you. Anyway, I'd want to tell my parents the same thing you do. That's why you brought me here, right? I also want to introduce my significant other to my loved ones. I would tell them not to worry about me any longer because I'm happy with you. I see. Sephora's simple reply came with a smile. His tender expression told me he'd absorbed everything I said and that it filled his heart with warmth. 
We better get motherfucking married. We got married to Ion. We were already married to Pashali. We better get fucking married to this bastard at the end. I'm going to be so mad if we don't. A comfortable silence settled between us as the crisp breeze whistled past. After some time, Zephora spoke up again. I feel really, really bad for making you wait a whole year until I came to pick you up. Sorry. Huh? That year gave me a lot of grief, and we've been over it so many times. But he already apologized when he came to pick me up. He should have known I forgave him for it. I wasn't sure why he was apologizing again. I have a duty as sentinel of Kultura. I shoved my personal affairs at the wayside until everything was sorted out. I'm sorry for making you feel lonely. Still, it's bound to happen again. Even if I want to prioritize you, there will be times my job gets in the way. So please, let me apologize in advance in case I ever make you feel lonely again. Forgive me. You're way too late for that. I know you truly care about Kultura and the people. And I know you want to be a great sentinel who could make your parents proud. I have to put up with a lot more with you than, than I would dating someone without all those responsibilities. But I was prepared for this the moment I fell in love with you. I know that and I still love you the same. I see. Oh, but you're absolutely not allowed to let me be lonely, all right? You've got to make up for lost time. Huh. Okay, sure. Honestly, I wouldn't have been surprised if you'd dumped me after making you wait so long. I'm glad you didn't, though. I'm so happy you came with me without hesitation. Thanks, Spacey. I'm grateful. Truly. <laughs> I can tell. Words couldn't describe my love for this man as he sincerely tried to express his feelings. I gently took his hand in mine. He softly closed his fingers around mine. Whenever I talk to you and see your face, I'm reminded of something. And that is... the fact that I need you. And that's why... And that's why... From now on... I... He's blushing! Oh, God! You better tell me you love me right now. You what? And now he's mad. Because he's so awkward. Say it! What I'm saying is... Yes? I'm trying to... You know what? Yet again, this man struggled to say the words that mattered most. I love him so much! Even in this moment, he's so awkward! Oh! He was acting the same when he came to pick me up. I still remembered how he rattled off all kinds of working conditions just to get me to come with him. Back then I was furious about him spouting nonsense after making me wait so long. The man I loved was just that kind of guy. He couldn't bring himself to be up front with his feelings. <laughs> oh, cute. I pulled Zephora close. This is so adorably sweet. I love it. Oh, precious. It's a CG in case you couldn't figure that out. That way, he couldn't see the smile spreading across my face. This might make it a little easier on you. You... He, rested momentari oh, he resisted momentarily on reflex. Look at his smile. Oh, so sweet and innocent. But then he leaned into me, letting out a soft chuckle. His arms came up around me, keeping me close. Say it. I listened to his rapid heartbeat as I waited patiently for him to continue. He sucked in a breath and pressed on. To tell you the truth, I wanted to do this a different way. Like at a popular restaurant we barely go to, or during some special phenomenon that only comes once a year. You're such a romantic. Is that bad? <laughs> Not at all. I know you wouldn't normally think about this kind of stuff. It makes me happy to know you came up with lots of ideas for me. Good. I'm glad. In the end, it was all just that. Ideas. I wasn't able to plan any of it. I couldn't get the timing right. I made you wait once again. I was about to repeat my mistakes. I wasn't ignorant to the fact that you want something more than what we have right now. But I didn't make any moves to fix it. I'm so sorry I've kept you waiting. It's fine already. You know, this is the best moment of my life. Really? So this is the best moment of your life, huh? Oh, well, yeah. Why? 
From now on, I'll make every moment better than the last. That's a promise. So... Why right is he geared up to say something else? Do not cook filio. The wind picked up in whirlwind gusts. It was so strong I had to close my eyes. A sweet, soft kiss landed on my lips. Then the gale eased back into a gentle breeze. I opened my eyes once more. Sephora and I were practically floating, kept afloat by dozens of flowers and leaves. Cute. Whoa! I asked the wind spirits for help. It won't last long, though. Spirit sent flower after flower cascading up from her feet. This is amazing! A pleasant wind, a clear blue sky, and lovely flowers beneath us. Thank you, Zephora. I'll never ever forget this. Consider it my brand new best moment. It was but a fleeting exchange. We alighted from our flowery pedestal shortly after. Yet he still didn't say, I love you out loud. The moment my feet hit the ground, I hugged Zephora in delight. Or ask us to marry him. That's what he's trying to get out, but he still didn't do it! I'm glad you liked it. I'll also try my best to express my feelings in words. So please, be with me forevermore. Let's get married. Okay, now tell me you love me. Out to my face. Despite his extravagant act, his proposal was very simple. He'd also conveyed his feelings directly. Yes, I'd love to. He still didn't say I love you. <laughs> I mean, technically he did it earlier in the game while we were asleep. But like, does that count? I don't know. I mean, I guess, but it's still like, does it? No sooner than those words left my lips did the wind blow strongly once more. Our blissful moment was festooned with vibrant petals in the breeze. The spirits were congratulating us, giving us their blessing. It's a beautiful CG, I love it. Hey, Zephora, there's one more thing I'd like to hear from you. Say it. You said you wanted to try expressing your feelings in words, right? What might the first step there be, hmm? Oh, look, he's so embarrassed! Well, um... Zephora understood right away. He knew the words I most wanted to hear. Isn't the hurdle too high for my first step? I want it now. I want this to be the happiest, most special moment of my life. Besides, I didn't get those words when we kissed for the first time. <laughs> Clearly nervous, he took a deep breath. But it's so cute because it's like, we know he loves us. He does all these little things to show us, but he just can't get the words out. It's so cute and ridiculous. He's the awkward one. I love it. He slowly let it go. And then... Mm -hmm. He gave me a peck on the lips. His gaze held mine. Oh, good. He's gonna look me in the eyes. At long last, he said the words I yearned for. Spacey, I love you. Ah! Is that how they're gonna end his fucking route? Because I'm gonna fucking cry. I love it so much. It really is. It was perfect. It was perfect. It didn't need to continue on past that. You know what I mean? Like, it. you know how, like, sometimes it'll be like, and then this happened, and then this happened, and then this happened, and then, then you're like, okay, wrap it up a little. Nope, nope, nope. That was just like, I love you. And perfect. It was the most perfect ending ever. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to die. I love our salty little clown. He's so awkward and ridiculous. They made you wait the entire... I mean, that's not really true, because he kind of said it to you while you were asleep, but they still kind of almost made you wait the entire fucking fantasy crowd for him to say it. They knew what they were doing. They were like, this bastard doesn't know how to convey his feelings. And like, usually as soon as like, then the marshmallows become marshmallowy and they're gooey all over and they're romantic. But this fuck not going to do it. You're going to have to force it out of him. Oh, my God. It was so worth it. So worth it. Anyway. On one sunny day with a pretty blue sky, please tell me we get married now. The circus reunion show that had been in the works for so long finally arrived. And it's our wedding. Yay! We got a full house! Sneaking a peek from backstage, I saw the audience sitting in anticipation of our show. Eyes a sparkle. 
it won't count if we get engaged, but we also don't get married because everybody else we we married to. So it'd really kind of be rude. But it's a little sad that Pashali and Calivis aren't here with us. All is bound to happen. Calivis is the prince of our nation. He did say he would watch our show through the chalice, however. Isn't he also going to do a speech at the start? We can just catch up with him after. I'm worried about Pashalia. I heard he is feeling unwell, and they have to keep bringing up poor Pashalia dying. If we're not romancing him, he's dying, and I hate that. I mean, there's nothing we can do about it. Let's go visit him at his house, to get, uh, at his house together one day. He's sick. We're just going to bother him if we barge in there making noise. Be more considerate, lizard brain. We get to see him in that sexy tit window. <laughs> Look, his costume is slutty. Look at that. Look at that. Look at the showing all that cleavage. What the hell? Being a whore. A whore clown. A clown whore. <laughs> I love it so much. <laughs> Watching you two banter reminds me of old times. <laughs> I know, right? You can reminisce on the good old days as much as you want, but shouldn't we stop these too soon? I'd rather not clean up any messes. Ginia pointed at the two men who were still bickering. Provoked by Zephora, Vilio was about to change into his dragon form. S stop right there, Vilio! You're gonna destroy the backstage! Uh, oops! My bad! I got caught up in the heat of the moment. You too, Zephora! Don't taunt Vilio just because you find it fun. Sorry. Whoa! He actually listened! Seeing Zephora so obedient brings a tear to Pulpa's eye! Stacy really has him wrapped around her little finger. Hardly. Zephora's just matured, that's all. Your presence and support have led to his maturing as well, have they not? And give yourself some credit. Ann was always so honest. His sincerity had me feeling bashful. Still... Like I got used to seeing Zephora use magic. But show me what you can do once we're off stage. I imagine he can make you fly great distances if you're in your fey form. Oh, sounds great. Let this pretty lady soar through the fluffy clouds and take the world by storm. Oh, I hear you loud and clear. I'll make it fly so high I'll become one with the stars in the night sky. Will I still be alive by then? Sorry to cut your lively chat short. But it's almost time. Okay, let's do our thing, guys. We're gonna bring a smile to every face in the cultura. It's showtime! I like the fact that we get to see our show, but I'm also a little sad that, like, we might not get a wedding. Because, like, we got weddings and everything. You know what I mean? All the meticulous preparation and rehearsals were worth it. The show went smoothly, and we approached the climatic moment. Climactic moment, wow. We're not done yet! This is just the beginning! Surprise wedding! Filio unleashed his magic as the roof and sides of the tent fell away. Our show tent was transformed into an outdoor stage. We'd done it to add wonder and pizzazz to our special show. Ladies and gentlemen, your wait is over! Oh my god, we are... We'll now begin the Labyrinth Sentinel's wedding ceremony! I love it! I was kind of hoping. I was like, when he was like, we're not done yet. I'm like, really turn this into a wedding, please? Is that what we're doing? And that's what we're doing, and I love it so much! We wanted everyone in the plaza to be able to see us, not just the people inside the tent. The other members had proposed this flashy production. they gotten carried away, firing off one idea after another. I was against it at first, considering this was the wedding of THE Labyrinth Sentinel, the head of a very traditional city. And I thought Zephora would agree with me. Yet he only murmured, sounds great, with a completely serious look. That was how our wedding ceremony turned out this way. I love this so much. It's a circus wedding, and that's very fitting of us. <gasps> he looks so beautiful in the white so <laughs> Cheers erupted from the plaza the moment we appeared seriously. This rat has almost made me cry like 15 times. I didn't think this would work out, given Zephora's position and all. But now I realize there will never be another moment like this. It was a once-in-a-lifetime ceremony only the two of us could do. 
Mr. Sentinel and you too, miss! Congratulations! Kultura is counting on you two! May you be happy! You two, congrats! Feel free to come to me whenever you want to complain about your husband. Oh, Spacey! Please be happy! Oh, come on, Rady. The fur in your face is drenched. Oh, goodness, you won't be able to see her in all her finery this way. I don't care about your runny nose, but hold back those tears. Easier said than done. Besides, you're one to talk, Speria. You're crying, too. Of course I am. I was so worried when I heard she was moving to Kultura. But seeing her smile from the bottom of her heart, obviously I'm gonna cry. Ah, oh, congratulations, you two. Come on, you two, wipe your tears already. Look, she's so beautiful in her wedding dress. Take a good look at her and carve it into your memory. It's true, though. They're both stunning. Agreed. The current Sentinel has finally found a soulmate, and the city is in good hands. <laughs> true. The city will always be peaceful and safe if we leave it to them. In fact, I believe it'll only get better from here on out. I need to do my part, too. And to think that love was born between our travel companions and were able to witness their wedding. I feel like I've received some of their happiness. I know, right? The ceremony's amazing. And by the way, when should I give them Pashalia's towering bouquet? Dude, I'm, I'm in awe every time I look at it. It's my first time seeing a bouquet that's even bigger than you. You're the only one who could carry it, so let's go place it in the mansion later. Understood. Aside from us, the citizens, the Fey Beasts, and the spirits are all congratulating them. Everyone here looks genuinely happy. Those two are definitely the best friends we've ever had. Agreed. Congrats! Oh, so beautiful. We were showered with well wishes from all sides. They buoyed us as we gazed at each other. Do you promise to love each other for the rest of your lives? To always be there for each other and to build a happy family. I love the fact that Ginny is presiding over our wedding. That's perfect. We both... I do. Oh. As we support each other, not only our family, but the whole city will be filled with the brightest smiles you've ever seen. I vow to become an even greater sentinel than my father. And then, I promise to make you happy. So happy that it'll make up for all the pain and suffering you've endured. How beautiful. Flower petals fluttled, fluttered down around us. This little surprise hadn't been part of our plan. It seemed like the wind spirit's way of celebrating our union. How cute! As the petals danced in the wind. Ah! I'm gonna wait and kiss him and die. I love it. It's so beautiful. The two of us sealed our vows with a kiss. We were bound to bicker in the future. We'd run into obstacles, make mistakes, and disagree on things. However, when that happened, we would ask our reliable friends for help. And at the end of the day, we would smile and make wonderful memories together. Lastly, we would bring much, much happier news with us the next time we visited his parents. Oh, God, babies? No. Oh, gonna tell them you got married? I hope that's what you meant by much happier news. Is that we got married, not children. But you know what? I like that they left it open if you wanted to interpret it that way. Because I know that there are some people who are really like, oh, I wish they'd give us more like happy, or, like when you think like, you're married and you have a family and there's kids and I like that. And I'm like, I hate that. That ruins it for me. You know, I don't, I don't like it. I don't want babies. I don't want it forced on me. Even though like theoretically in this is like, you're going to get married and you have to have kids because it's a, like a hereditary position. You know what I mean? But I don't want to think about it because I don't like kids and I don't want games forcing me to have kids. But I understand that there's a lot of people that want that, that like that kind of thing. So I think leaving it open, like we're going to bring a much happier news to me. Like we got married. Yes. And you know, some people could be like, oh my God, they're going to have kids. You know what I mean? Like, cause you know, that's the intention. You know that that's probably going to happen in their future. But for me, it's like, nope, don't have to worry about it. Nix that out. You know what I mean? 
Because, like, some of them, like, if they're not my favorite, I could be like, oh, yeah, don't hurt, probably. But, like, no, I want to marry fucking Sephora, okay? Like, I want to live vicariously through this game, so don't force kids on me. <laughs> I mean, like... Oh. Oh. No, but this was good. It was everything I needed. Okay, Ginny's route and having an Aleste ending was everything I needed. This was just perfect for fucking Sephora. Like, good God. Oh. Like, look at how precious he is. I love him so fucking much. And, like, just the making it, like, he's so difficult. Like, he couldn't convey... Even though you you know you're in love and then they just dragged it out to the... Oh, God, it's so brilliant. It's so frustrating, but so good. It could have easily gone awry, though. You know what I mean? It could have very easily gone badly where you're, like, mad because, like, they did it in a way that's very different for like, I don't remember. Oh, this one does have it. You know what I mean? Like, again, most characters like him, they get and they turn into mushy puddles of goo and they're all romantic and shit. And like, once you crack that, we still didn't get that out of him. Like we got to the end of his route in the original game. And it's like, he came and picked you up. It's been a year. And you're like the hell. And then he didn't say he loved you. What the fuck? And then they give you this. And it's still, like, trying to milk a fucking rock. You know what I mean? You're like, just give me the feelings. But he's doing all these little subtle things behind while you're sleeping and coming in and always telling you how he feels. But he just can't say it to your face. Okay, that one did only have two. You know what I mean? God, I love this one so much. You know what I mean? Like, it's so good. Because it's a little different. You know? Like, he didn't turn into this pushy, like, puddly mus... Mu ugh. Mushy puddle of goo? He did, but secretly, again, back door, back alleys, subtle ways that sometimes you didn't even know he was doing it. You know, but he could never say it out loud to you. And I... That's so good. Was this the one that was three? It is. God damn it. I hate that it does this. This one's four and the next one's two. Okay. Oh. But it's... I, I like. I like it. I think it worked out really well because you knew the whole time you were like, I know he adores me. Just tell me. And then they waited till the very fucking end to give you the I love you. And then it fucking cuts the credits like son of a bitch. So good. Oh. Like, look at how big that is. That's the only thing that sucks about this one is like. You know what I mean? Like, because it's so, like, big with the beautiful sky, it's so long ways. I mean, you can zoom in, but it's so pretty. I still love this one. This is my favorite. Like, there is something about this look on his face with the cars down in front of him. And he's just so fucking proud of himself. It's just, listen, I know we could go with one of the cute, adorable, kissy ones. The one with the flowers. Like, okay, this one is really pretty, too. Like, this is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. But there is something about this look on his face. And it's just like, yeah, no. <laughs> so this is where we end. Oh, God. Good times, though. Um, I loved it. I'm thrilled. So anyway, uh, we can do anything next, but... We have basically done everyone but Vilio and Rady. So I think we do Rady next because I think that was what we did in the original game. One of you guys told me the routes that we did in the original game. And it was basically how this was playing out anyway. So I was like, oh, perfect. Look at that. We did do Ion. I couldn't remember. But then you told me and I was like, perfect. That's exactly how we did it. And a Atome Kittens guy did say that Vilio kind of seems like the big ending. Obviously, after that, there's still all of the other side kind of stories the little bits and pieces so we'll do all of those afterward you know what i mean so but yeah we will hit Rady up tomorrow so i will i have nothing else to say about this it was beautiful it was perfect i missed my salty little clown boyfriend and oh the agony of making me wait to tell me you love me but we actually got a wedding still thank god oh my god it's perfect i love it so much I just I have nothing else to say, but I love it so much. So I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more.